Hello everyone, my name is Ijoma Etsy and I'll be talking on optimizing cash usage in Docker Build. Um, about me, I'm a software engineer and I'm very passionate about sharing knowledge through writing. I'm also an active contributor to the open source com um, community. And then you can connect with me on LinkedIn or Twitter. Let's get started by talking about why Docker builds can feel very slow. So one of the biggest pain um, points with Docker, with Docker build is that even the smallest code change can trigger a full rebuild. That means you are often rebuilding parts of your application that haven't even changed. And this can significantly increase build times. So without optimization of your Docker, Docker will usually run through unnecessary steps again and again, wasting um, the compute power, right? And um, if you've ever worked in a CI CD environment, this is usually a very real problem because it causes a very long build time and slows down your testing or your deployment, which um, ultimately reduces the entire developer productivity and no one wants to really sit around waiting for views to finish when they can like they could be shipped or they could ship features really quickly so why does this optimization really matter first it speeds up the development faster and also it um, allows developers to retreat iterate and test their changes really really quickly so um, also it helps save money right because when you have a faster build it means that um, um, you will have to spend a lot of compute power which can re reduce infrastructure cost um, so yeah understanding docker build so now let's take a closer look at how docker builds actually work so um, the first thing is that uh, when you start building Docker loads the build context. So when you run a Docker build, like it gathers all the files in the directory where you are building the image. And these files make up the build context and can impact the build process. So um, the next thing that it does is that it passes the Docker file. So Docker reads this instruction in the Docker file and execute them one by one. And then um, the next step is that it creates an immutable layer so just these are like set of instructions in the docker file right and it creates a new layer in the for each layer for each instruction in the docker file it creates a new layer um, and then these layers are immutable so once they are built they do not change so um, also the last thing that happens is that docker uses caching to speed up rebuild so rebuild like when you need to build your docker your application again using docker so docker just uses the unchanged layer to avoid redundant processing and making your builds much faster so this is an example of a docker file and uh, um, let me just break this down really quickly um, we have the first one that's from python 3 one right so this is like the base image ideally you could use like an alpine which is in the context app and then it copies all the contents from the requirement.txt file first. So this is like a Python project, right? And then it sort of installs the dependency. And this step is you can be cached if the requirement.txt doesn't change. So like if you do not add any new stuff to the requirement, any new module to the or package the requirement.txt it doesn't um, install more dependency. And then the next thing is that it copies the rest of the application files, right? And then it defines the command to run the application. So this is like um, what happens. So, um, but there's one very important thing, right? The order of the instruction really matters. So if you place, um, placing copy.requirement.txt and running pip install, would first help Docker to cache the dependencies separately from the application code. And this avoids unnecessary reinstalling dependencies when only code changes. So um, now that we've really understood the fundamentals, let's explore ways to optimize caching for even faster builds. 
how does caching work? Now we understand how Docker builds work. Um, let's just talk about caching. So which is one of the most important ways Docker uses to speed up builds. So what is Docker? Um, basically Docker cache, um, Docker saves previously image layers and reuses on the unchanged steps whenever possible. And this avoids rebuilding the parts of the image that haven't changed, making the builds much faster. So for example, if you want to, if you want to install a dependency in a Docker file and they haven't changed, Docker reuses, reuses the previous views layer instead of running the application process again. Concepts in layered caching and like if each instruction the Docker file creates a layer and some layers can be cached while others can't. So let's go over the table in the slides. Um, from the previous um, slide, I, I showed you uh, a Docker file um, so here, I'm just going to talk about the layers that can be cached in that Docker file. Um, we have um, the from Python 3.10. That is cacheable. Base image is usually cached. So unless you pull a new version, this layer remains the same. So when you review the working direct change often, right? So Docker usually caches this part. So um, the, the step um for copying the requirement the txt is also cacheable so this step is cached as long as like the requirement the txt remains the same and then um if the requirement the txt hasn't changed docker will reuse the cache dependencies um so the command to copy the entire uh, application code is usually not cacheable and these steps um copies all the files basically in the directory and if any file changes this step breaks and the cache is forced um this step breaks the cache and is forced to rebuild so that's what happens so this is why it's important to structure your docker strategically so um problem why docker builds can become inefficient so even with caching docker builds can be very slow and here's why. So one thing is um, small mistakes in the Docker file can invalidate the cache and forcing unnecessary rebuild. So another thing also is the structure. So if the instructions are not properly um, ordered, um, this can also for force an unnecessary rebuild. So another thing is um, frequent dependency change. So if you are constantly updating your dependency means that you're forcing docker to <clears throat> install um, the entire um, requirement the txt every time and then um, also using copy so if you use copy at the beginning of your um, your docker file um, this can just cause like this can break the cache and then it will build again and also another thing is like bigger image are uh, usually longer to build and um, deploy some common pitfalls uh like i already said earlier are your order of instructions then um, another thing is using add instead of copy so this is like extract files unnecessarily or copy uses like cop use copy like um, unless downloading archives so like try to avoid using add um, sorry, um, try to use add instead of copy every single time. And then um, any changes invalidate the cache. So be very explicit about your copied files. So um, you can try to always use the wildcard. It's practices for optimizing Docker build using cache. Um, structure a Docker file for maximum cache reuse. Um, so another thing is you need to place table instructions before the frequently changed ones. And then you can use the multi-stage build to reduce the final image size. So you only want to keep what's necessary in the final image um, to reduce bloat. And then make sure to leverage the Docker ignore to reduce the build context size. So 
excludes any exclude any unnecessary foul that um, that could slow down the the build. Another thing we want to do is we want to use arguments as the arg instead of environment variable, and because arg is always available, it's only available during the build time, and it keeps your image cleaner. Um, so we can see from the Docker file that I placed here, and we see how it was properly structured. So um, um, why d this is optimized because the dependencies are copied first, and so they are cached separately, and then the application files are copied last, so preventing unnecessary cache invalidation. Um, so there, this this is the basic caching instructions or caching techniques so in the next slide i'll be talking about advanced caching techniques so now we've covered the basic caching techniques um, um there are some really advanced caching techniques and that is using the mouse for building cache so one powerful way we can speed up things is by using mouse for caching so um Bind mount um, or volume mount um, can help persist dependencies across build and reduce a redundant installation. So we can add the mount um, equal to type and equal to type cache with build kit. And this allows Docker to cache immediate builds without creating unnecessary layer. And this would help to improve the performance. So, um, we can also leverage external cache sources, right? Um, one of the um, Docker has a build X for distributed caching, and this allows caching to be stored, to be shared across multiple platforms and environments. So, um, yeah, I just placed the code on how to, an example of how to um, store build cache in a registry, so every new build can reuse it. So this ensures that the build um, ensures the build reuse the cache layers, making them much faster, especially if you're working in a CI CD environment. So another thing, uh, when you've improved your cache layer properly, you want to measure or debug your build performance, and. Um, there are different ways of checking it or um, so one way it's by using the docker build progress plane and this shows um, it just gives you a more detailed output to check if the layers are being reused and you can also use the docker history um, this would basically list image layers and their sizes to see what exactly is cached so if you want to analyze the docker image you can use you can also use the docker history you can use the time docker build and this should this measures like the duration to track if your if your if there's any improvements in your um caching in all these tools it, it helps like um spot any chances um and then it can keep your build or can make your build run really fast. So um, Docker builds, in conclusion, Docker build is very essential for speeding up builds and it reduces the resource usage. So by structuring your Docker files effectively and avoiding common mistakes and utilizing advanced techniques, like I mentioned, using the build X, um, we can significantly, significantly improve the build performance and the next step after doing all of this is to um, apply this in your real life, in your real project, and then also try to um, analyze if your your build time or analyze if the caching works properly based on the technique I explained earlier. Thank you.